Well, in this week's Cardiology Countdown, we have more information on the safety of a plerinone in high-risk patients with heart failure. Also, a fascinating study uh, called Pontiac looking at uh, use of uh, natriuretic peptides for risk stratification and targeting treatment in diabetes. Uh, and finally, the Look Ahead trial is published and uh, just presented at the ADA. So to start out with, we have a follow-up analysis of the issue with uh, spironolactone and aplerinone, that is the fear of hyperkalemia. And so from the Emphasis HF trial, they had pre-specified some high-risk groups, those with lower uh, EGFR, uh, elderly patients and patients with diabetes, and looked at the risk of hyperkalemia with a K greater than five and a half or greater than six or requiring hospitalization, uh, and then also at the overall clinical benefit. And they found in these high-risk groups a higher rate of getting the potassium above 5.5, but below six, so no increase in hyperkalemia with a K above six, in fact, numerically lower in, in many of these high-risk groups, uh, but a persistent benefit in terms of the primary endpoint of uh, death or heart, heart failure hospitalization. And so really reassuring information on the safety of using um, aldosterone blockade in heart failure, and this was a group with class two heart failure, um, and um, that should hopefully open the door to further treatment. Next up, we have another paper in Jack, a fascinating trial called Pontiac that used NT-proBNP for risk stratification of outpatient diabetics seen in the clinic. They looked at uh, patients and, and targeted an aggressive uptitration of ACE or ARB and beta blockade in these diabetic patients and followed them for two years. And with this intensive strategy, they found higher rate of use of these agents and higher doses, lower blood pressure, lower heart rate in the intensive group. And most importantly, they found a significant reduction in the primary endpoint of uh, death or cardiac rehospitalization. This is a modest sized trial of just 300 patients, but I think a wonderful expansion of this notion of targeted uh, therapy using biomarkers. And the number one pick this week is the um, final publication of the primary results of the Look Ahead trial. Now, this was a study of uh, intensive lifestyle intervention in diabetic patients who were overweight or obese looking at clinical outcomes. We had already seen that the intensive lifestyle intervention focused on calorie reduction and greater exercise did in fact reduce weight. Um, at one year it was 8.5% uh, versus just 0.7% in the standard care. And at the end of the study, an average of 9.5 years, it was 6% body weight reduction versus 35 in the standard group. But those reductions, um, although they improved on, on other uh, markers like blood pressure and hemoglobin A1C, did not reduce cardiovascular events. There was no significant difference uh, in events out to nine and a half years. And so this uh, you know, shows some of the limitations of lifestyle intervention, but on the other hand, also reaffirms that it did impact several of the risk factors. Um, but I think a, a challenging uh, notion that we'll have to come to grips with of just how much clinical benefit do we get from the lifestyle intervention. And that, I think, put in contrast to benefits of, say, statins uh, in primary prevention or um, aspirin, uh, often used in, in diabetes as well, and ACE and ARB, all proven to reduce events. And so this hopefully will reignite uh, the debate on the role likely of both uh, lifestyle intervention and appropriate medications. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.